Hello and welcome to InfoWise Smart Action Pro demo. Smart Action Pro is a SharePoint 2007 and 2010 add-on that allows you to define, using just your browser, actions that will run whenever you add, edit, or delete an item, or according to the timer. These actions range from updating a list item, creating new list items, creating lists, sites, running store procedures in external databases, managing your Active Directory, and many more. Because you configure your actions using just your browser, there is no need for any development tools or development knowledge. So you can save a lot of time and money that otherwise would have to be spent on development. First, I'm going to show you a quick example of what Smart Action Pro is capable of doing. And then I will guide you through the interface of how you can create your own actions. In my example, I'm running a set of actions whenever I create a new project. First of all, I go to the projects list and create a new item. You see that I only need to enter the project name. Once I do that, the following actions will be executed automatically. First of all, a review task will be created in a different task list. Then specific permissions will be set to that task. Afterwards, the project will be registered in an external database. A new team site will be created for the project beneath the current site. We will create an initial task in a task list of the new site. We will then create a link to the site leading back to the item that I'm currently creating. And we will send an email back informing us that everything has run correctly. The actions can be executed both synchronously and asynchronously. In this case, the actions keep running even though the item has been saved. So the process appears to be very fast to the end user while still running in the background. So you can already see that the new task has been created. And if we go to the permissions of the task, you will see that this task has unique permissions set for the specific user we defined. Now you can see that the site has been created and a link has been updated leading to the site. If we go to that site, we can see the new task has been created in the task list. I can also click on the action column to see the action history, meaning which actions were executed on the item and with what result. There is also a possibility of executing actions on demand by simply clicking on the execution column. In this case, it sends an email. Now I will show you how you can configure your actions using just the browser. If we go to list settings, we will see that there is a new option here that's called action settings. This is where you configure your actions. So first of all, we need to create an action column. Each action we create must be assigned to an action column which will hold its history, will allow us to opt in and opt out of action execution, and will also send an email to the action owner when the actions fail. You can create as many action columns as you want, but in most cases, it's enough to have just one. The next step would be creating an actual action. We now have 13 different action types you can choose from, such as updating one or more list items in any list of any site in the current site collection, creating new list items, deleting one or more list items, copying an item or a document to a different location, sending an email with details of the current item, running any workflow, creating a new list, creating a new site, managing permissions of a site, list, folder, or an item, running sort procedure on any database, Oracle, SQL, or any other type, calling any web service, managing Active Directory, which will include creating new users, assigning users to groups, creating new groups, and so on. And if you have InfoWise Smart Print Pro installed, you can also print out your items, send the printout to an email address, or save it in a list. You should give a meaningful name to your action. This is how your users will see it. And you can also add a description. Next, you need to specify when the action runs. Actions can be executed when an item is created, modified, deleted, or they can be timer-based. For instance, the action can be executed based on a date and date column. 
for example, one day after the task has been created or two hours before the due date. You can also repeat the action several times. The actions can also run daily, weekly, or monthly at a predefined hour. Under advanced settings, you can specify the action columns the action belongs to. You can set whether or not the action will be hidden. A hidden action runs always, regardless of whether or not the action column is actually visible on the form. If you plan to run actions responding to events that happened programmatically, such as using code or a datasheet view on a web service, you have to set your action to be hidden. The execution mode of the action can be always opt out, opt in, or show as column. If set to always, the action will always be executed as long as the action column is visible on the form. Opt out means that the action will be executed but can be disabled by user on per case basis. Opt in means that the action will not be executed unless the user chooses to execute it. And show as column means that the action is shown as a column of the list and will be executed when the column is clicked. Execute every time means the action is executed every time the item is saved. If the checkbox is left unchecked, the item will execute only once, unless it failed to run successfully the previous time. Hold actions on failure means that subsequent actions will not be executed if the current action fails. Impersonation means that the action is executed with administrative privileges. Otherwise, it will be executed with the privileges of the currently executing user. Synchronous means that the action is executed prior to actually saving the item. That also gives you an option to cancel saving the item if the action was not successful. For example, if you use the properties of the currently created item to run a stored procedure, you can stop saving the item if the stored procedure did not succeed. The action settings tab is specific to each action type. Currently, we are using the update list items action, so we can select the site, the list, and the items to be updated. Then we can specify what values we want to set to the columns of the update item. For instance, to update the current item, we will just select the ID and match it with the ID of the current item. You can use the value picker to help you generate the value to update or to use in conditions. For instance, the ID field will be the field name surrounded by square bracket. You can also use any other column value and or you can use functions. For example, you can calculate the year of any date, the current user, or even use a lookup to bring values from a different list altogether. You can even use runtime values if the URL of the site or name of the list are only known at the right time. If we go over to the conditions tab, we can specify the conditions that must occur for the action to run. So we can run the action only when specific conditions apply. For example, we can run the actions only when the title field is changed to contain the word, the word project. So the action will only run when responding to the event when the title field is changed to contain the word project. When we update the item next time, the action will not run because the title field already contains project and it's not changed. As I mentioned before, each action type has its own specific action setting. For example, when we go to run DB stored procedure action type, you will see the place to specify the connection string and the parameters to pass to the stored procedure. If we go to set permissions action, you will see a place to specify the scope the action type, user and permission level. When creating a site, you will see the URL, the language, and the template. In summary, Smart Action Pro allows you to turn your regular SharePoint list in a real-life application without having any development knowledge and experience. By combining multiple different actions with conditions, you can automate almost any business process you can think of while saving a lot of money on expensive third-party development.